Hi everyone. Uh, this lecture is about radiation interaction coefficients and other important quantities. We will start by discussing cross-section, which mainly describes the probability of a given interaction between a target and an incident particle or energy. Then, uh, we will discuss about mass attenuation coefficient, mass energy transfer coefficient, mass stopping power, and other related quantities. I will be using the International Commission on Radiation Units and Measurements, Report number 85, titled Fundamental Quantities and Units for Ionizing Radiation, the revised version, as my main reference. Let's start. These are the quantities that we will discuss in this lecture. Your ionizing radiation can be a particulate radiation, so it can be charged or uncharged radiation. Then we have your photon, can be X-ray or gamma ray. Once it interacts with a certain target, we can have the following outcomes. So first, uh, there can be a change in its energy and direction. We can also have an absorption uh, due to the interaction. And last, it can emit one or several secondary particles, let's say secondary electrons or delta rays. The likelihood of such interaction is characterized by interaction coefficients. They refer to a specific uh, interaction type of uh, process and actually it depends on the energy and the target material. The interaction coefficient is dependent on the following. First, uh, the interaction process if it's Compton scattering, photoelectric effect, or per production. Or for charged particles, let's say we have a soft or hard collision. It's also dependent on the type and the energy of your radiation. Last, it is dependent on the target material. A fundamental quantity for the radiation interaction is cross-section with this symbol, small sigma. This is a characteristic of a target for a particular interaction produced by charge or uncharged radiation of a given type and energy. This is described by this quotient wherein your N is the mean number of such interactions per target subjected to the particle fluence phi, capital phi. Uh, note that particle fluence is just the number of particles per area dA. A special unit for cross-section is barn, wherein one barn is equal to 10 to the negative 28 square meters. Now, let's say we have the situation wherein we have a group of charged particles with different energies, E1, E2, and E3, and it is directed towards a certain target. If you want a full description of the interaction process such as this, in terms of energy and direction of all the incoming particles resulting in the interaction, we can have your differential cross-section as its description. When a cross-section is specified as a function of some final state variable, let's say it's energy dE or it's solid angle d rho, then uh, we have this distribution of cross-section or differential cross-section. On the other hand, when a cross-section is integrated over all scattering angles and possibly other variables such as the different types of interaction, J, let's say, it is called a total cross-section. Next quantity is mass attenuation coefficient with the symbol mu over rho. And this is a characteristic of a material for a particular type of interaction due to uncharged particle. And remember that this is for uncharged radiations only for of a certain type and energy with this unit. Uh, this is described as the quotient of dn over n, which is the mean uh, fraction of the particles that experience given type of interaction in traversing a distance dl and rho of or density of a material. 
the mu here is the linear attenuation coefficient and the probability that at normal incidence and uncharged particles undergoes an interaction, let's say, of a certain material thickness of DL. It is described by mu times DL. Where in your mu, again, is the linear attenuation coefficient and DL is the thickness of the material. The linear attenuation coefficient can be expressed as a reciprocal. And this is called the mean free path, which is the average distance uh, an uncharged particle travels in the absorber before interacting. Then, the mass attenuation coefficient can be expressed in terms of the total cross-section sigma. We express the attenuation coefficient in terms of mass attenuation coefficient in order to reduce its dependence to the density of the material. Then, the relationship of your mass attenuation coefficient with the total cross-section is this one with your Avogadro's number over the molar matter mass of the target. Then we can also express the mass attenuation coefficient in terms of the individual cross-section for each interaction type J. Last, we can also express this one in terms of the number of density of the target then uh, target entities in a volume element divided by its volume. In a compound material, if it is consisted of independent atoms, we can express the mass attenuation coefficient in terms of the cross-section, wherein L is the type of the target, J is the type of the interaction, wherein we ignore the effects on the cross-section of molecular a chemical or crystalline environment of an atom. Next, the mass energy transfer coefficient of a certain material for uncharged particles of a given type and energy is just the quotient of dr sub tr over r by rho dl, wherein D, uh, dr tr here is the mean energy that is trans transferred to kinetic energy of charged particles uh, due to the interaction of the uncharged particles of incident reagent energy or in traversing a certain distance of the material DL with the density rho. We can also express our mass energy transfer coefficient in terms of the individual cross-section with this F factor here. Then we have this relationship of your mass energy transfer coefficient with the mass attenuation coefficient. Also, we can express your mass energy transfer coefficient in a compound material as shown. The product of mass energy transfer coefficient and the quantity 1 minus g is called mass energy absorption coefficient, wherein g is the fraction of the kinetic energy transferred to charged particles they subsequently lost on average in radiative processes such as Bram's Shalung, in flight annihilation, and fluorescence radiation. And your mass energy absorption coefficient has a dependence with the stopping power. The mass stopping power of a material for a charged particle of a given type and energy is given by the quotient of DE by uh, raw DL, wherein DE is the mean energy loss by the charged particles in traversing a certain distance DL of a given type of material with density rho. This is given by this unit. We can also define linear stopping power by removing the rho or the density in this expression. So thus linear stopping power is equal to DE over DL. Okay, so now let's further discuss mass stopping power. We can express mass stopping power into three terms as shown. The first one refers to the mass electronic stopping power, also called the mass collision stopping power in all literature. And this is due to the interactions with the atomic electrons resulting in ionization and excitation. The second term is the mass radiative stopping power, and this is due to the emission of Bram's trillium, let's say, in an electric field of your atomic nuclei or atomic electrons after the charge uh, interaction. The third term is the mass nuclear uh, stopping power, and this is due to elastic 
Coulomb interactions in which there is a recoil energy that is given to the atom. Those three terms of mass stopping power can be expressed in terms of cross-section. For this case, we have the mass uh, stopping power or mass electronic stopping power for an atom. And this is expressed in terms of the following. First, the Avogadro's number. We have here the molar mass, the atomic number, and our differential cross-section. After discussing mass stopping power, we will now have a linear energy transfer. This is also called restricted linear electronic stopping power of a certain material. And this is for charged particle of a given type and energy. This is defined as the quotient of dE delta by dL, wherein dE delta here is the mean energy lost by the charged particle due to electronic interaction as it traverses a certain distance in dL of a material minus the mean sum of the kinetic energy in excess of the cutoff energy delta of all the electrons released by the charged particle. To have a better understanding of linear energy transfer, we can define it as follows, wherein dE, uh, Ke delta, is just the mean sum of the kinetic energies greater than delta of all the electrons released by the charged particle as it traverses a certain distance, dL. And SEL here is just the linear electronic stopping power. So therefore, in this definition, we are removing those energy uh, carried away by energetic secondary electrons having the initial kinetic energies greater than delta. So it's like a locally transferred uh, energy. And delta can be expressed in, in terms of electron volts. So when we say L200, it is understood to be the linear energy transfer for an energy cutoff of 200 electron volts. If no energy cutoff is expressed, the unrestricted linear energy transfer, L infinity, is just equal to SEL or L. Now let us define radiation chemical yield uh, GX of a certain entity X, uh, which is just a quotient of NX by certain epsilon, wherein NX here is the mean amount of substance of that certain entity X produced, destroyed, or changed in a system by the mean energy imparted epsilon to the matter of that system. We can also define a certain re uh, related quantity, G value, which is uh, defined as the mean number of entities produced, destroyed, or changed by an energy imported of 100 electron volts. Next, we will define ionization yield in a gas, Y, which is just the quotient of N by E, wherein N is just the average total liberated charge by either sign divided by the elementary charge E when the initial kinetic energy capital E of a charged particle of a certain type is completely dissipated in a gas. Last quantity is mean energy expended in a gas per ion pair form W and this is expressed as the quotient of E by N where in N here is the mean total liberated charge of either sign divided by the elementary charge E which is just a constant and we have letter E here which is the initial kinetic energy of a charged particle introduced in the gas which is completely dissipated. We can define also a differential value of this so we have small w as shown and it has this relationship with, uh, of your the capital W and small w, and we're in your I here is the lowest ionization potential of the gas, and E prime here is the instantaneous kinetic energy of the charged particle as it slows down. This is related to the average energy uh, required for the formation of holes and electron pairs in solid state physics. And here are all the coefficients and quantities that we have defined in this lecture. Thank you. Hey guys, I hope you have learned something in this video. If you like my content, please consider subscribing my YouTube channel, GP Academia. And if you're new in YouTube, there is a button right down below this video. Just click that to subscribe. See you then. Bye guys.